You may have heard about audio editing or sound editing, winning Oscars, winning awards, and being an important part of the production process. But what is it exactly? And is it the same for podcasting? Hi, I'm Mike Migas, and today I'll be talking about editing sound. Hi, I'm Mike, producer of a true crime podcast, Case File and Case File Presents Shows. On this channel, I release videos on audio, podcasting, and what it's like to be a podcast producer. So if you enjoy the content, hit like and subscribe buttons. After I left school, I tried a bunch of stuff. Live sound, helping out in independent uh, recording studio. I even started learning uh, game sound implementation in FMOD and WISE. And then I got a job at the most famous film studio in the UK, Pinewood. I worked there as a sound dialogue editor at the International Sound Department, and my job, in a simple terms, was to prepare the sessions for the re-recording mixers to do their mix. That's where and when I learned the ropes and later developed my skills as an editor. But what is the sound editing? I would describe it as cleaning up the recording and preparing for the mix. There are of course different aspects to sound editing. Foley editing, sound effects editing, music editing, dialogue editing, and so on. And all these can play a part in producing a podcast. If we look at podcast production and post-production, we have four distinct phases when it comes to working with sound. That's recording, editing, mixing, and mastering. And for now, we're going to leave out scoring, and that, as that's only applicable to a small number of shows. Editing is the second stage in the process. And personally, I find it the most laborious and time-consuming task. And it's kind of a lonely process as well. The adrenaline of the recording session is gone, you're not in the fun part of the mix yet, and you just have to clean up the mess. But editing can involve some creative processes as well. And in podcasting, you have a little bit more freedom, because it's not like in movies where the sound has to follow the picture. So let's now talk about uh, tools that you need for a good editing session. First, you need audio software that offers stability, control and speed. And stability means that you won't be surprised by sudden crashes and the loss of your progress. Speed and control go hand in hand. And I'm not talking about the lag in your system or in your software, but the speed of the interface. Now combine it with the control of that interface, especially with keyboard shortcuts that are well designed or programmable, and that's what you need for that fast-paced editing session. When it comes to editing, preparation is the key. And it doesn't matter if you are the one recording the session or the files are sent to you. You need to know what you're working on and then prepare your templates accordingly for that edit. Create the needed tracks, name them and color code them. Sound effects, music, dialogue. Make sure the workspace looks clear. Things like naming conventions and color coding will help you during your edits. When editing, you'll be looking at doing things like cutting audio clips up, moving things about, or cleaning them up. It depends on your software and plugins on how much you will be able to do. Basic editing, that's available in any audio sequencer. But if you're looking at more in-depth cleaning and restoration, then third-party plugins from companies like Isotope will come in handy. One tip is that if you're working on some kind of a destructive process, meaning it cannot be reversed, have the duplicated track muted in your session, or if you're working on a clip, uh, copy it and slide it on a track below and mute it to keep that original handy. When you finish your editing, it's important to save the session as a new one with an extension like session one underscore edit. So that edit is easily accessible in the future if you need it. Editing may not be the most glamorous job in the world, but it's an important process in a production flow. On a movie, big movie production, sound editors need to work to a specific color coding, naming conventions and guidelines. So the session is clear for the mixing engineers. With podcasting, it's a little bit different, you have a little bit more freedom. However, I think you should, you should still follow these rules, even if you're the one mixing your show later on. In podcasting, you have the freedom to design your workflow, to design your templates, but don't skip the crucial step of the edit. 
I know you might find it boring, you just wanna move on, you, fin you wanna finish that episode and release it as soon as possible, but the editing, it's what lays foundation and structure for your podcast. How much do you spend on editing your podcast? Do you find it as important as I do? Do you agree? Maybe you don't agree? Let me know in the comments below. But that's it for today. I'm Mike from Mike Winkers Production. Share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Thank you.